This is the tracker software that we're going to use to actually track our hex bug nanos. Um, and I would like to kind of walk through that process of actually setting up and doing the auto tracking. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually open up a file. And so I'm going to go ahead and grab a file that actually has our hex bug in it. So you can see that we have this little gray bug down here. We're actually going to do this in an auto track feature. Um, uh, just to kind of show you some of the controls that you have down here, this tells us the frame number that we're currently on. Um, this adjusts the speed down here. Um, this would back us up, and this is our play button. We do have the um, markers down here at the bottom that will let us uh, start and stop our um, video at certain points. And then we have our how many frames we're going to advance when we step forward or backwards. I'm going to go ahead and, and look at our video file first. So I went ahead and looked at the clip settings. And you can see that we're starting on frame one. Our step size is one, so we're going to advance one frame. And that we end at 388 frames. I'm going to change that to 380 frames because we want to make sure that we have some consistency between our clips. And all the clips that I took uh, were about 12 seconds, which should give me, or a little more than 12 seconds, which gives me that 380 frames that I'm looking for. And so you can see now that I've got it to that point, I'm going to go ahead and set some of my parameters. Um, first thing I want to do is create a coordinate system. And so by taking my coordinate system, I clicked on that um, uh, X, Y axis, and I'm dragging it down here to the bottom corner. So I want to keep everything kind of first quadrant. So I'm going to have everything in, in positive uh, values. So that way I don't have to look at any um, motion in the negative Y or the negative X directions. Um, once we set that, I do have to have a scale set as well. So I'm going to go ahead and, and create a new calibration stick. And a calibration stick is nothing more than just a, a ruler that's in the frame. I'm going to drag it down here because on my setup, I actually know that this position from this end of the base to this end of the base is 7.5 centimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and, and change that to 7.5 centimeters. Um, the tracker software doesn't actually know unit-wise, and it won't report anything in units, so I do have to keep track of that myself so I know that I'm in centimeters. Um, from this point, I now have my clip set. I'm going to go from zero frames out to 380. I have that set. Um, I'm now going to create a track. And when we create a track, we're going to create it as a point mass. Okay, so a point mass, meaning that we're going to study the particle in... Uh, its place. This is software that's generally used for particles. I am going to change the name of it, and so I want to actually call this a light. Uh, actually, this one is a gray, I believe. Gray bug. So I want to name it. Uh, you may want uh, to name your bug. Um, maybe, maybe you have your own attached to your bug and you want to give it an actual name. At this point, we now have our bug named, um, and we're going to start our auto tracker. So auto tracking will come up with a window that looks like this, and there's some different things. So it's telling me what frame I'm first on, and I don't have a template yet. Um, and then I have from my template, I have this evolution rate, which tells me exactly how good is my template versus the match. And then an auto mark, and I'm going to leave the auto mark set, and I'm going to probably bump up my evolution rate to 40. I like to kind of keep it so that it doesn't it doesn't lag a little too much and it will look ahead to actually put a mark on the bug that I'm going to use I'm using I'm going to hold the shift and the control key down at the same time you can see that it changed my cursor into this kind of crosshairs thing and I'm going to pick the head of the hex bug to kind of study and you can see here that there's my template and there's the match that it's going to look for so I'm actually placing my first points there I'm going to go ahead and start my search, and what it'll do is it will actually start to look for a similar location on that hex bug as it travels around. Now you can see that I actually got into where it stopped tracking, and it says that the template should look like this, but the match looks like this. That's that evolution rate. So in other words, it's still not within the guidelines, so it's actually just under my threshold of a score of a 4. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to accept that. 
um, and then it'll come through and you can see that I run into a few problems here and there. Um, now, every now and then, it will look like it moves that mark. So you can see that it looked for the mark, but it's no longer looking at the head of the bug. It's actually looking on the back. So I'm going to go ahead and recalibrate that. So I held my shift and my control key down, and I'm going to click back on the head. And there I realigned myself to look at it. So my template's changed, and my evolution is matched up fairly well. You can see my bug's going along, and I'm getting lots of frames right now. And I did run into a problem here. I'm going to have to move my window a little bit. Oh, it's still on the head of the bug, so I'm going to go ahead and accept that. And again, I'm, I'm getting this all kind of real time. You can see that it's generating a position time graph as well as a table down here. Now, I did see it looks like my bug started to tip over a little bit. It's still on the head, so I'm still going to accept that. And then I, it started to track, and it lost a little bit at that point. Now, I can make kind of a little bit of a correction here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a little adjustment to bring this back up to the head. I'm going to hold just the Shift key down. This lets me manually put a point in here. So I'm going to put a point in here on the back, and then it'll kind of move through and give me a little bit more. Um, at this point, it, we're really okay as long as the... Um, bug itself, I'm going to recalibrate this one, kind of stays in that same point. Um, I did start by taking it on the head, but but actually being on the bug is, is going to be an acceptable uh, solution for us when we're tracking this. And you can see now I'm almost up to my 380 frames. I'm at 340 right now. I'll go ahead and accept that one. I'm still on the bug. And accept those and they're just about done here now. I've only got about 30 frames left. Let's just check to see. Oh, we're still on the bug, but I'm going to go ahead and recalibrate so I'm a little closer to the head and go ahead and accept those. You can see now that I'm getting close to being done. Okay, so now I have my my auto track done and I've got all 380 frames set up and so now I can go ahead and close that window. If I want I can go back here and I can just watch how it tracks again so it's going to show me my tracking. Okay. And I can pause that and I can just grab the playhead too and move it around so I can check individual points. You can see there's the point where I kind of lost a little bit on the back of the bug if I wanted to I could redo this. But I, for our, our purposes tracking the bug is going to be okay. And so there we go. Um, this window up here is actually going to be my plot box. And you can see I can change from plot to table uh, view. I'm going to keep it on the plot view. But I'm going to change my axis to um, X and Y. So I'm going to look at an X and a Y position. And you see that this is then the graph that I would get. And if I'm going to bring this graph in to my Word document or into my lab report, I can just right click on that. And I can actually copy that image. That image can then be brought into, say, Word, uh, any kind of a, a Word, do, a pro, Word processing program, and I can then paste that image right in there. And so you can see there's that image that I pasted in there, and I can resize it. So it gives me a, a nice tool to get a, a visual representation in there. I also have this table of data, and this table of data then is is a plot, or it's uh, x's, or a, I should say times x's and y's. So we can look at x, um, a, an x position time graph. I could look at a y position time graph, and I can kind of see what kind of movement I'm getting there. Similar to this, I can I can select all of that data, and I can copy that data and paste that uh, wherever I'd like to paste it as well. So if I wanted to bring that into my report. I can go ahead and, and paste that in as well. And for what we will be doing in class, we'll be pasting that into a spreadsheet so we can do further analysis of those values. Um, if you have other questions when it comes to Tracker, oh, at the end, uh, when I'm done, I do want to make sure that I save my file so I can go ahead and click on the uh, Save button and that will let me save, save my file.
and then I'll be able to analyze my next one. Um, hopefully that was informative, and good luck with tracking your hex bugs.